what did you read into the Queen's very short but actually quite informative um, statement? Uh, there was a lot of, there seemed to be a lot of emotion in it actually. Yes, it's a, it's a very uncomfortable time for the Queen, a uh, very uncomfortable comfortable time for the country. Um, Her Majesty has responded um, sharply and I think succinctly, and she, she said that this will be dealt with in private, and that's the way the palace deals with these things. Um, she will investigate it. It's a, it's a serious complaint to make against the royal family, racism. I personally, during my 21 years with the royal family, have never seen any evidence of racism. In, in fact, quite the reverse. Her Majesty's dedicated her reign to, to her Commonwealth. And her so Majesty many does would not say, speak. Paul, quite rightly, yeah. that if you, uh, you would not have heard racism necessarily because you wouldn't no. be the subject of it. So therefore, how would you know? But I'm just putting that point forward well, because, was, yeah. yes. That's how I know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think, I, I mean, I, in all of the discussions, of course, um, it has been pointed out that if uh, the Duchess of Sussex felt that it was racist, then mm -hmm. that has to be taken seriously as of an, an allegation of evidence of, of racism, yeah. of course. And it is yeah. being taken seriously, Paul, because it is. it is going to be investigated and dealt with. And so it I, should. And, and I wonder whether... This claim that it's going, you know, in the statement, it's going to be dealt with privately. That I just don't think that's conceivable, is it? Because people are speculating about who it is. It's very important if if it turns out to be exactly as Prince Harry and Meghan uh, describe it. It's important uh, that we know that there is accountability. I mean, you yes. know, it, we we talk about transparency and accountability. You know, this is one of those occasions when that has to be done publicly, doesn't it? Well, yes, it does. But, you know, this interview was a masterclass um, in interview technique and it was edited very carefully. And I, I personally feel that um, this we don't know the full story behind uh, this racism comment. We don't know who said it. We don't know in what context it was said. Um, all of that has to be explored. And I think it should be done in privately and perhaps the findings of, of Buckingham Palace will be will become public. Well, it's interesting um, when, when the statement says that recollections may vary, which suggests that a, an effort has already been made to speak to somebody about this who has then given a different version of that scenario. But there are inconsistencies in the interview too, because Meghan has different um, recollections to what Harry has. Mm -hmm. Meghan said it happened during her pregnancy. Harry said it happened before then. They, Meghan said that she she was married before the wedding in the in the uh, St George's Chapel, and that doesn't seem to be true as well. But we all of this will be investigated by Her Majesty, and it is a family affair for her. I think Her Majesty has enough on her plate at the moment. She's worried about her husband in in hospital. She there's a pandemic raging. She has problems with Andrew. Everybody seems to bring their problems to the Queen's feet. And I feel terribly sorry for Her Majesty because she is our Queen and she's our Head of State. Mm. And she's also um, incredibly capable. <laughs> and my goodness, yes, hasn't she did. dealt with an enormous number of challenges uh, as, over as her she, decades yeah. as monarch? And, you know, people are always asking me, what, I mean, what would Diana think? What would Diana say? And I think it's, it's relevant to say that um, Diana would have one arm around uh, William and one arm around Harry. She would want them both to be happy. She wouldn't want them to, to be divided. She'd want them to stand together. And Diana was a monarchist. She believed in the monarchy. And she wrote a letter to me uh, a year before she died. And in it, she said, I just long to hug my mother-in-law and tell her how deeply I understand what goes on inside her. Except. And she also said, wow. I so want the monarchy to survive mm. and the monarchy must survive because it's very important to our country. It is it underpins who we are. It's interesting you say that. I mean, we, there's so much more to dig around on this. But, you know, the, the sort of polling suggests that, you know, majority of young people, 18 to 24, who are, of course, the future generation, uh, actually think that they were treated unfairly. And that will last, you know, that lasts with you, your feelings about whether the monarchy is relevant to you, what they do for the country, whether they're worth paying for. So many, uh, I mean, the ricochet out of this could be quite catastrophic. Thank you so much for joining us um, this morning. Let's You're go to... Uh, Clive and Angela too.
Um, Clive, to you, I mean, it's um, this issue of uh, varying recollections, say, which is what's being said in the statement. Uh, is that a problem, in a way, when we're talking about um, how one experiences racism? Um, I, yes, I, look, I think one of the things that I'm loath to do is kind of coming at this from the kind of the personal angle. I, I, for me, this is about an institution. And I think one of the reasons why this has resonated with so many people is because it reflects um, something that they have experienced themselves. You know, if you think about the fact that in many walks of life, um, you know, there are many different classes, nationalities, uh, racial backgrounds that, you know, have only just recently gained entry into certain institutions. And so I think, you know, they've been excluded by law sometimes for a long, for a long time. So I think this is, this, this is touched on a nerve which runs through our country, Black Lives Matter, uh, Lloyd, Floyd George and his death. I think what you can see here is that people are, are asking questions about the mirror that it's held up to us, the country. And what do our institutions reflect? Now, clearly, there will be people who may have views inside the royal family, which I may find um, distasteful, uh, even offensive. But this is, I think, not so much about the individuals. For me, it's more about the institutions and their fitness for purpose in the 21st century in our democracy. Angela Levine, you know Prince Harry uh, to a certain extent. Um, you've written about him a lot. Um, he has said, you know, we heard from Paul Burrell there about what would Diana think. I mean, Diana is sort of at the heart of everything here, really, because he has repeatedly said he does not want history to repeat itself. Um, you know, he wants to protect his wife from the sort of treatment uh, that his mother received. Um, but also, there is another element here, of course, hugely significant, which is that, you know, his wife is a mixed race woman and he feels an added responsibility because of that. Um, what do you make of the interview and, and that Buckingham Palace is now uh, sort of statement that they're going to deal with all of this privately? Yes. Well, um, when I was interviewing Prince Harry for a biography of him, he felt very strongly that his mother was looking down on him from heaven and was guiding him as to what to do. And he was aware of it and wanted to follow in her footsteps. At the engagement interview, um, he said as well that uh, Diana would have absolutely been best friends with Meghan and has jumped up and down uh, for joy. So you're absolutely right. Uh, she is always in his head, as she is in Williams, but um, he doesn't articulate it so much. And I, I was very disappointed that anybody could feel racist um, uh, and, and, and it would ruin their lives. I mean, it is a horrific thing to do, but I think there is a difference between um, making a ra racist remark and disagreeing. And I think that we need to have a look at that line quite carefully because there have been some accusations, I'm not saying by Megan, but some people, that if you disagree with them, then you are automatically racist. And I think it's very important that we avoid that. And I think that the Queen has very good judgment and she will think about it carefully, talk to people herself. She's not having... Um, anyone else get involved in this, she is going okay. to do the question and have people come to her and uh, she will come out with a sound judgment, I'm quite convinced. And it's quite interesting, isn't it? The sort of um, feeling that seems to come across is that there is still a great deal of affection and respect for the Queen, but that doesn't actually filter down now to anybody else in the family. And that, for the future of the monarchy, is an extremely huge problem, isn't it? And I think that this interview has certainly lifted the lid on the fact that we're paying millions of pounds to essentially a facade. You know, what we see from what they say, if, if we are to believe what they said in that interview, it is a facade. We pay for what it all looks like. And actually, on the inside, they're sort of rattling around, all deeply dysfunctional and deeply unhappy. And do we really want that to represent our country anymore? Is it relevant to the future generation of this country, the multicultural future, the, you know, young people have their own voice these days. We don't live in, in the 60s where we have three channels on telly and we don't have Instagram. And, you know, these days, everybody wants their own voice. 
Angela. I mean, it, it does seem that it's, it's created that huge gap between what they do and what the country really is about. I um, can't agree with you. I no. think the monarchy is the most respected one in the world. And I think that if you have seen the other senior members, how they have handled the pandemic, reaching out to people, going around thanking them very much, make a huge difference. Harry did this too. I went with him to so many engagements and he would go up, um, especially people who were damaged psychologically or physically, and he would say a few words to them. And I would go up and speak to them afterwards and they say, he's changed my life. But the you thing know, is, they'll still be able to do, the point being that they're stepped back from the royal family, they may even be stripped of their titles, and they can still have that impact on the world, can't they? They don't need, it. clearly, it just shows from the interview, they don't actually need to be in the royal family anymore in order to have an impact on people's lives. And that's sort of the point that's being made, isn't it? No, I don't think that's true. No. If you watch people who are intimately engaged with the Ros, even for a few minutes, they are changed. They will stay overnight to see them. They like the glamour, they like mm. the mystery, they like who they are and what they're doing. And I think they see that they work very hard, not just for British, but for, for the Commonwealth too. Okay, and Clive, I just want to, just before we let, yeah. we let you all go, Clive, the fact of the matter is the monarchy is huge. You know, I mean, it's, it's beloved by uh, hu millions of people. And what the monarchy does and how it behaves and how it treats people, as Angela says, you know, people feel that they're sort of touched and their lives are changed sometimes by their interactions with the monarchy. Other people, Harry and Meghan, feel their lives have been changed negatively. I mean, where does this leave the monarchy, our respect for the monarchy, our love for the monarchy, because they have raised questions which have led to fallouts that we're all feeling. So, yeah, look, uh, do I think Prince Harry is incapable of, of acts of kindness, of the Queen, of doing good? Of course they are, but this isn't about the individuals. I mean, of course the story is about the individuals. It's a soap opera of a family. And like many families, they're dysfunctional. Our family, you know, all families have an element of dysfunctionality to them, and, and this is one of them. And this one also has something else tied into it, which is racism. How many other people have come back with a, a person from another background, a black person, a black partner, and had an experience with their family where someone has said something? This is very common. Uh, but what it does, because this is at the heart of one of the key structures at the heart of our society, I think it tells us that actually this isn't about individuals, it's about an institution. And it's also about our media. Is it fit for purpose? The way it's operated, the way it's treated, treated Meghan Markle. I think there are serious questions around that. So look, we live in a democracy and I think the decision about what any change looks like, how we're governed, should be made by the public, not the royal family, not politicians like me, but by the public. And they've okay. never been asked that. We live in a democracy, but yeah. have we ever been asked how we want to be governed? So I think ultimately this will have long-term implications. Okay. We won't see them immediately, but you know that might not be a bad thing.